Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey and you are here. Uh, you found us. If this is your first time checking us out, what's up? It's Jersey. Have a look around. Hopefully this doesn't suck too bad. Uh, and you want to go back and watch some other episodes. We're in the 30s, so you got a lot of catching up to do. Um, this is going to be available via iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, TuneIn, anywhere you can find podcasts, and it's also on YouTube. So wherever you're watching or listening, what is up? Thanks for checking us out. Um, if you are part of the nation, if you are one of the nation, I appreciate you guys. Really, every week I say this, but um, I don't want it to get lost. Uh, you guys are awesome. The people who watch my show all the time, uh, every week they're there. Every week they're commenting. Every week they're thumbs upping it. Um, you guys are awesome. You really are the reason I get to do this show. So thank you very, very much. And finally, I am a sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource. So if you need anything supply-wise, if you want to put an order in, big or small, let me know. Hit me up. Shoot me a text, 862-312-2026, or you can call that number. Um, and to all my existing clients, people who literally will call me up and say, hey, I got something out of your show, and I just want to buy something from you so you get credit for it. Thank you. It's awesome. <clears throat> As you can hear, this week I do... Just getting over a cold, last week's episode was uh, mid-cold, and uh, voice was bad. A bunch of edits for my coughing. Hopefully this week will be a little bit better. So, um, I want to give out some shout-outs uh, this week. Um, Master Pro, finally, you're commenting. What's up? Uh, I'm glad that uh, you're around. I'm glad you're getting something out of it. Brian Stone, what's going on, my man? And uh, finally, Aaron Rudy who I give lots of shout-outs to, but uh, Aaron's the man also. Um, and winner, winner, Carlos Saldua. I probably butchered your name, and I'm sorry, but you're the winner, man. You won just for commenting. You won a $50 credit for Window Cleaning Resource and the sticker swag bag. That's a T-shirt, Ettore pin, stickers, the whole nine. So uh, all you got to do is email me your address, and we'll get that out to you. Um, <clears throat> anybody else wants to email me, my email is josh at windowcleaningresource.com. So if you want to win next week, all you have to do is on YouTube, comment down below, say what's up, say anything that you want, good or bad, enter in some feedback, let's talk, and uh, that gets you entered into the contest. So every week we randomly pick a winner, and uh, that's how you win. So definitely do that. Take a second right now if you're on YouTube, comment down below, just say what's up, where you're from, and uh, that'll be golden. So, this week, our episode is going to be on hiring a salesman. Now, full disclosure, this is a very, very tricky situation, a very tricky position, the hardest position you can have to hire for, and you need to know if you're ready for this. So, don't take my advice. I'm a nobody. I don't know anything, man. Do your research uh, before you hire one and uh, find out if you're really, really ready for that step. It's a big one. Um, Elk County Window Cleaning, which was uh, Chris uh, Lamborghini's, the uh, Lamborghini's brothers, uh, Elk County Window Cleaning. Uh, Sean was their salesman forever. I talked in depth with him, kind of got um, a feel of how to go about hiring a salesman, and we've gone through a few salesmen. Very hard position to go. The first time that I personally tried to get a salesman, it was too early, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But you need to know if financially you're able to do a salesman. Now, <clears throat> it would be perfect. If, if you could go out there and find a salesman or a saleswoman, for all intents and purposes, it's called a salesman, okay? Uh, if you could go out there and find a salesman that works 100% on commission, you have the awesomest salesperson ever. Why? Because if they don't produce, they don't make nothing. If they do produce, they make something. But it's very, very hard to hire somebody on the idea that they may not get anything. And that happens. I'm a commissioned salesman for Window Cleaning Resource, right? There's days where I'll work hours and not have anything to really show for it for that day. Or at least not great day, you know? So it's very hard to, first off, find somebody. So 
What that means is you need to pay them hourly and commission. If you pay them just hourly, they're not going to perform or they're not going to be motivated to perform like they would if you gave them a little spiff, right? A little, uh, a little extra motivation, if you will. So you need to find out, first off, if you're ready. Now, a lot of guys out there go, oh, I'm hiring a salesman. That's the first person I'm hiring. It's not quite the way you want to do it. You want to hire a salesperson when you're to the point you need growth and you are too busy doing what you do to get a salesman. First off, you got to be out of the field. If you're working out in the field doing the work still and you're hiring a salesman, I think that's completely bass backwards. I think so. You may not. Tell me down below. Let me know why I'm wrong. I'd love to hear why I'm wrong, really. We're all trying to grow in this, right? But I think that's backwards, and I'll tell you why. If you're still out in the field, you're producing your uh, work um, at a certain dollar amount. So say you pay your guys 10 bucks an hour. Again, for even numbers, money's different all over. You may pay 15, you may pay 20. Whatever that number is that you pay your guys, that's what you're getting paid. Because the rest of it, you'd already be making anyway. If you make you know, $100 an hour, you pay somebody $10 an hour, you're making $90 if you work or if somebody works. So first off, what are you doing? If you're to that point, get out of the truck and go do the office stuff. You're supposed to be the salesman. If you're to the point where it gets so busy with everything else that you're doing that now you need to bring somebody in that's dedicated sales, you should be at a dollar amount where you're comfortable enough, you have an excess of money, right? Because of saturation to the company. Touch on that real quick. Saturation means one truck can hold two guys. So that one truck, all the bills that are associated with that truck can run those two guys for 40 hours in theory. There's no more associated bills working 20 hours with those guys or 40 hours with those guys. You got to hit saturation or close to. If you got three crews out there that are only working three hours a piece, you're, you're, you've done it wrong in the first place and you're not to saturation. So you shouldn't be doing this. But if you are to saturation um, and you're just so busy, I got to a point where I was so busy doing everything else with marketing and um, and sales and uh, office stuff and things that you need to start handing some of that out. Got my office goddess, right? Told you guys about her. Amazing. And um, I still did sales when I had a salesman, except for it was helping the salesman. Because here's the thing. If you pay them hourly and you pay them commission, you need to give them gimmies. There's gimmies. Somebody calls you and says, hey, I looked up your ad and I would like an estimate. You got to give those to those that guy. So he's making something. He's producing something. He's getting better at his craft. Those gimmies, even though it's costing you a percentage, is motivation for them to keep going. So anything you get in should go to the salesman. Now, how Chris did things is they had a uh, residential girls and then they had an actual dedicated salesman that went out and did the commercial stuff. You could do it either way. You don't necessarily need to separate them, but you need to understand that uh, residential stuff comes in. If you're splitting it up and not giving them all the gimmies and you're only giving them commercial gimmies, well, then somebody needs to answer the calls in the residential, depending on how many calls you're getting. If you're getting 100 calls a day, you know, you got to figure something out. If you're getting one call a day, I think you can handle that, right? So here is a good structure, just a starting point of how we did it, how a lot of guys do it, how people get into the whole salesman thing. You could take it, adjust the numbers to your area, right? Cali, you guys pay more. You have to make more. Your pizzas are $40 a piece, right? Or you can go to, you know, southern Louisiana. Maybe there's a different pricing structure there, right? So take this with a grain of salt. But for even numbers, if you're paying your salesman, pay them an hourly. So not a great hourly because you don't want them to live off the hourly. You want them to have motivation to go out and sell more. So what we did was we had that salesman at $10 an hour. And um, you have to understand that if they don't bring in anything, A, they're not going to be around because you're not going to keep paying somebody to not produce. But you have to give them some leniency. It takes bit a, a while to get them into this, right? But they're going to get $20,800 a year before commissions at $10 an hour, if my math is right. Okay? So that's 21 Gs that you need to be okay with losing. If you're tight right now 
and maybe you're still eating ramen, you're reinvesting everything, a salesman's not your 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 biggest thing to do then right now, right? People call and they say, hey, I want I want a pole. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want a pole, water fed pole. I want it to be four pounds. I want it to go up 70 stories, seven, <laughs> seven stories, 70 feet. I want it to be the most rigid one on the market and I want to pay you $1,000. What do you got? Nothing. What do you mean you got nothing? You, if all you can afford is $1,000 and that's what you want, it's not time to do that. We have the same thing too where sometimes people say, hey, I need a pure water system. I need an RODI system. I need a pole. I only got 100 bucks. What can I do? What can I get? You can't get anything. What do you mean you can't get anything? You're just not to the point financially that you can go to the next step. There's nothing wrong with that. We all grow in certain increments. You have to grow in increments. Otherwise, you grow too fast and you screw yourself, right? So if you can't justify losing $21,000 just on the low end in a year, then sales is not, it's, it's not time for you to get a salesman. That's the, the truth and the kind of hard truth of the matter is a lot of you, and I keep bringing this up, a lot of you may not be in the position that it's salesman time. Some of you are. So either way, a lot of people want to go out and they want to hire their buddies. I got a friend who's off work right now and he wants to sell for me. Commission based. Great. Pay him as much commission as possible because in theory, a job is worth years of service. So if a job's coming in and it's a hundred bucks a month, that's $1,200 a year for the foreseeable future. Okay. That one job could be ten year, a 10-year job, right? You can't count on that, I know. But in essence, it could be a $12,000 job. But he sold it for 100 bucks. So why not give that person as much as possible? And now it's your job to keep the, keep the work coming in. So if you can do that on commission, fine. If you have to do, you have to keep salesmen motivated and happy they have to be motivated they have to be happy sales is the hardest job of any of this we know right that's why you want a salesman so keeping them motivated with an hourly helps them understand that they're going to make something it's not like a car salesman car salesmen have a thing that is called a, a draw okay a draw means that they are going to get x amount per hour or the higher amount of commission. They're going to get one or the other. So they know that there's always a cap. So they know they're not going to work and not going to make anything. You have to design it something like that because a salesman has to be motivated. If a salesman sucks, they're not motivated. They're not going to sell nothing for you, right? So they have to be motivated. Keep them motivated. 10 bucks an hour, you're at $21,000 for the year. Now, what I do is pay 10% of the yearly value of that job. So again, that $100 job, they're going to make a commission of 120 bucks. So where does that number come in? Could you do one once a month, you know, whatever they bring in for that month? Yes, you could. That's a 12th of the yearly, right? Easier numbers. But a 10th equates to this. So the first time you do this job, they say again, even numbers. You bring in, they bring in a hundred dollar job. Okay. That hundred dollar job has to get done and it has to be paid out. So you're paying the, com- the commission to the salesman. You're making nothing that first month, but you're losing more money than that. You're actually giving employees work. So now you have to pay them to do the job. Now, if your numbers work out right, you should be at about 30% of that job paid out yes i know some people go 38 whatever it ends up being somewhere in there a third of that so you are going to be two months in second month you're not paying a commission but you've already paid the commission on the first one up to what we do 10 percent, right and you've paid the guys to do the work so the second month you're paying the guys to do the work again with the commission was paid to the second one you get the money the second time that goes to all labor. You've profited, if you've done it right, $0 second month. Two months of doing that work, you've made $0. So if you lose a client within the first two months of a salesman landing it, you will lose money. 
that just gets chalked up to making the salesman happy and making the salesman motivated. Okay. I know these numbers are like, what? No, that, that trust me, trust me on this one. Again, I don't know anything from anything. I don't, I'm just some guy, right? Use your own judgment, do your own research, check the forums, check the groups, check windowcleaner.com community, check pro window cleaning, check uh, water fed window cleaning and ask around. But this is the way that most people want to do it because it makes both people happy. So here's what happens. Month number three comes around. Now in the third month, now all you're doing is paying labor costs. So you're going to make a profit month three and every month from there on out, you got work. You're building the empire that is your company. You're not building yourself a job, right? You're building an empire. That is just layering, 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 all the way up, okay? Now, say you have a salesman that's as great as me or somebody's as great as you, right? If you have an amazing salesman, excuse me for the coughing, I'm sorry. But if you have an amazing salesman and they sell, say they sell um, $2,000 worth of monthly work in the first month, what? That's awesome, right? Well, let's calculate that out. Let's oh, we'll we'll go back down to one hundred dollars. So, in a twelve-month period, you're going to equate profits on ten of those months, right? Month one, total wash. Month two, partial wash from commission, partial wash from getting them clean twice. So, month three, on which is ten months, you're going to profit. So, in that first year, you're going to make a profit. On that hundred dollars, and again, there's costs to take them, but you're talking about take in money after your normal costs. Of course, you're paying people to do it, but I'm talking about what your company's seeing after everything. Ten months worth at a hundred dollars is thousand dollars. So if that guy can sell a thousand dollars worth of monthly work in the first month, in that year, you're gonna see a ten thousand dollar growth. Year two. It'll be $12,000, okay? See where this math is starting to equate? So you're looking at the long-term play. You're looking at what this guy can bring in for that year. Now, again, if you got a piece of paper, write all this down so you can follow it. I'm just throwing numbers out. And my math, I'm no good at math. So my math sucks. I may have some of this wrong. (laughs) Tell me I'm wrong. I'm fine with that. Okay, so if he sells $1,000 for the first month and $1,000 for the second month, Second month is still equating equating for a year from that time of $10,000, okay? So now he's brought in a total of $20,000 for a year from that last date. Now, even if you drop that down from that, drop that one month, and you're only talking about that one month, he's going to sell $19,000 worth of work for your company, which increases every year which builds stronger, which builds um, uh, uh, expected work, which means you are safer in hiring people. You have more guaranteed work, and especially in the route world where frequency is everything, you can equate comfort to that. Now you've paid your guy $20,800 plus commissions, obviously. He's bringing you in $19,000 by month two. And that's for that that year. Now, do the math. Keep going from there. The next month, he's going to take in uh, eight months, right? So $8,000. It's going to drop all the way down. So when everything's said and done, that first year, he brought you in. If you could sell $1,000 a month, which is which is a, a, an amount, right? You can't set goals too high either. But $1,000 a month for even numbers, you're talking about this guy bringing in you a ton of money, a ton of money. You're talking, I'm bad at math and I'm not going to do it. And I should have done it before, but I didn't. Do the math right now on the paper. In that order, you're talking about over $50,000 worth of work. And that will increase every year because, of course, you're, you're increasing your, your prices. You should be doing 2 or 3% increase every year, right? Cost of living increase. And... They could sell that every month for as long as they're there. Now, they're going to have good months. They're going to have bad months. Middle of summer, bad month. Sales is always bad. But 
in the middle of the winter, sales are great because the other guy's not doing it. So your sales guy is going to have that much better. So with that, the salesman of a company will always make more money than anybody else. Why? Because a salesman brings in money for everyone, right? Think about this. When I sell a squeegee, I'm bringing in money for myself, but I'm also bringing in money for Chris, for Alex, for everybody in the office staff, for every web designer, for every ad we put, right? I'm bringing in money for everyone. So everyone in the company benefits from a salesman. Yes, everyone kind of benefits from a worker out there doing the work because it's still income and profit. But to get those incomes and profits and to increase yourself, to grow, a salesman needs to be amazing and they need to sell for you. So in a certain point, when you're financially able to have a loss of $21,000 and you are okay with doing other things yourself and giving him everything, giving him those benefits, giving him those, um, you know, gimmies as we call them, the easy one, the Doris that calls, not client, repeating clients, I don't give them, but new stuff, say, hey, my name is Samantha and I'm calling to get a quote. <clears throat> I send them over. Okay, one second. Let me get you hooked up with our uh, our uh, estimator. Send them over. Those are gimmies because he's going to make something on it. Now, in houses, it's different. Uh, on houses, I'll give you 10% of the house because I don't know if they'll ever come in back. They may be twice a year. They may not be. But 10% of a $200 job is still 20 bucks. That's still nice, right? 20 bucks for just talking to them, doing the estimating. But what that also does is allows that salesman to be better at talking to people, better at understanding what you're trying to convey, what your USP, you know, selling point, how to sell people and how to close them. He's learning all that and it costs you 20 bucks and it keeps him happy, right? The salesman will make more money than you if you're at that size of a company because they're continuing to build growth and structure and security in your company and they're worth it salesmen are always worth paying them that much money because they're the ones out there hustling to get the new work and as we've said if you're not selling you're dying because you will lose customers sell or die or be happy where you're at now if you're a one-man show that's super awesome i'm glad you're even watching this far right high five to you when you make a dollar you keep a dollar right? Nothing wrong with that. But you need to understand where you're going to be and what you want to do with your company, where you want to go. If you're going to go the salesman route, you got a lot of steps to go before that. But keep this all in mind. The more you learn about all this, the better off you'll be. And again, I'm just a nobody. So take this all with a grain of salt. One other thing with paying a salesman is I will give a drum roll to 2% residual. What? 2% 2% residual. Yes, I will. Every job that come that that guy sells that comes in, I'll give a 2% residual on. 2% is nothing. I know. It's not a ton, but when you're talking about this guy could be potentially selling you, you know, a hundred thousand dollars worth of yearly work, and he's making residual on the job itself of two percent, that's pretty good little stipend. For him to continue to stay with you. And you want him to stay with you. You don't want him to go somewhere else, right? 2% stipend. Super easy to track. Anyone that the the salesman um, sells, I throw into a spreadsheet. And I know anytime that that job, if you have a right software, you can note it on the account with an asterisk next to the name. Uh, That's how I do it. Now, when that person leaves and a new salesman comes in, all that's wiped out. When you leave the company, you don't get any more of that. Of course. Obviously makes sense. So... You want them to be with you. You want them to be happy on what they have done. And you want them to continue to go out there and sell more. They're motivated when they know 10% is going in their pockets. Right? They know that. Now, the benefits to the route stuff is there's so much route out there that they can be anywhere and everywhere selling routes, selling jobs, and uh, getting all those to set. Now, they may be landing $10 and $20 a month jobs. $10 $10 bi-weekly, $20 a month jobs. But those are gravy. That's how you build a route. Now your whole route's running more efficiently, costing a heck of a lot less because you're getting more of those clients. 
So again, another benefit for a salesman. Now, um, on top of the route, and like I said, the gimmies of residential, or anybody who's calling you, there's also commercial. Now, you may be tempted in your brain to tell them to only go for the big stuff. But remember, we talked about this. Landing a $10,000 a year commercial job is great, but it is also super hard, super time-consuming to get into. So you need to sprinkle all of it in. You need to hand out, um, you need to go and do your commercial, big stuff, right? Emails, contacts, property managers, getting in with those ones. Those are good ones for them to put a little bit of effort in. Structure the day so that in the morning they return calls and emails, calling and doing researching, skip tracing, if you will, and property managers, setting up appointments if needed, getting those big commercials, and then in the afternoon they're out doing round. You need to kind of have sprinkles of everything, diversify the salesman so that they are able to sell as much as they can on all the platforms. If you only let them sell one piece of it, they're missing out on a lot of it. So definitely allow them to do that. The other thing with um, diversifying, if you will, is now if they're doing estimates for houses out in the field or they're doing it on the phone, that's their only job. They're going to upsell those jobs. Somebody calls for windows. Great. Okay. So we got you down for 249. That's inside, outside, track sales and frames, the whole kit and caboodle, 20 windows. And uh, how's your concrete looking or the siding? We can also do a house wash right before that. We'll actually discount everything for you because we're doing multiple service, blah, blah, blah. They can sell that. And they want to sell that because they want to raise their ticket. Why? Because when they raise their ticket, they make more money. When they raise their ticket, you make more money. So you want them to sell. You want them to do as many services out there. And Another thing that they can do is the call list. We talked about this. If you don't have an office person, I'm sorry, that should be something that's on your radar either way. They can be doing this. But if you have your salesman wants to take a couple of them, they can do the call list. These are gimmies, people that have already had service that you're actively calling, and they can upsell those people. So different options of a salesman. Give them everything you can and keep that salesman happy because a happy salesman is going to make you more money in the long run. You're going to be happier with a happier salesman. The one last thing I want to touch on is door hangers and flyers. Now, your guys should be out there when they complete a job doing five up and five down. Now, when I say should, those are my ideas. You can't be wrong doing whatever you do in your own business, right? But... They could be doing five up, five down. That's handing out door hangers that say, hey, so pardon our glare. We were just next door doing this. We'd love to do yours too, right? Keep it up with the Jones. It's a great, great thing. We call them five up, five downs, okay? Now, if you are on the other side of things where you have brochures or door hangers that are just general door hangers or a specific service door hangers, your salesman can go and hand those out. Now, on that door hanger, he needs to get credit for it. So those ones, if he's out handing stuff out, those are a little bit harder, a little bit far in between. But put a sticker on there. Print up a little label that says your promo code is sales one, whatever, so that you know who it goes to when they sell it. And just another way he can make commission. Now, he is the face of your company. He is the guy, the hungry, the wolf, the lion, the tiger, the guy who's going out there to get everything. He's got to stay hungry for it to be a great deal for both of you. He's making $100,000 a year, but he's bringing in $100,000 every year worth of work. It's worth it to both of you, right? And the numbers work out that you're not losing in the long run, okay? As long as he's doing a good sales you're not losing because the commission aspect of it only gets paid when he brings in work. So something to think about, not for nothing, something to think about. Yeah, I got Long Island friends now, huh? But uh, that's it. If you watch the show and you like it and you're still listening, please do me a favor, comment down below, thumbs up, and subscribe to the Window Cleaning Resource Channel. It's awesome. You'll never miss one of these. Also, Go to Window Cleaning Resource Window Cleaner on Facebook and like our Facebook page and set the notifications because we do a lot of lives. I'd love for you to be a part of that too. And if you're still watching and listening, please call me, text me, 
Love to hear from you. I love when people just say, what's up? Awesome show. But I love even more when you buy stuff through me. That's how I make credit. So anything, everything, you loyal customers of mine are amazing. My number, 862-312-2026. Hope you learned something today. Hope you got something out of it. Hope my voice didn't drive you crazy. Hopefully it'll be better next week. And until then, uh, thanks for watching. Go out there, be epic, and uh, make some money. Thanks for watching windowcleaner.com on YouTube. If you liked the video, please thumbs up and subscribe. And make sure to check back every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday so you don't miss a video. And if you're tired of binge-watching cat videos, check out WCR Nation's own playlist with every episode at the Window Cleaning Resource YouTube page.